And UN Chief Antonio Guterres surveys the trail of death and destruction across Ukraine, a visit that's also likely to include talks with President Volodymyr Zelensky in an ongoing push for peace. Now let's pick up on the Ukraine situation again. Will Denzler joins us live from Riga, Latvia. Will the Kremlin says that Western arms deliveries to Ukraine pose a danger to security in Europe. That might be perceived as a threat. What do they mean? Well, the message we've heard from the President Vladimir Putin is that if they deem uh, anything to be a breach when it comes to Russian security, uh, if they feel threatened by actions from the West when it comes to what they see as uh, their support and incursions uh, with regards to Ukraine, then they will respond swiftly. The message from Vladimir Putin is that their response will be lightning fast uh, and it will be like essentially unparalleled response to what any other nation is capable of. Vladimir Putin says that he doesn't need to brag, uh, they will just act. Now, of course, this comes in a week where we've heard from Russia's Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov, where he said that there is a real uh, danger when it comes to the threat of World War III, even potentially including nuclear weapons. So as the likes of the United States are urging uh, nations or allies of Ukraine to do more when it comes to supplying them with arms, we're seeing an increase when it comes to the Kremlin saber rattling. This week, we've heard from Ukrainian officials. They say these comments coming from Russia uh, are do uh, really born out of uh, desperation dawn uh, and come as an effort to simply scare Ukraine's partners from, continu from continuing to supply them with arms and, to and for continuing to support them. And on top of all that, Will, EU countries are now grappling with Russia's halt to gas supplies to Poland, to Bulgaria as well. Are countries planning to make payments in rubles? Well, of course, what we've heard from Ursula von der Leyen, the European Commission president, uh, this week is that she described this as blackmail as far as the European Union is concerned. We heard a similar language coming out of uh, Poland and Bulgaria as well. Now, this was very much refuted by Dmitry Peskov, uh, the Kremlin spokesperson, saying they weren't seeking to engage in blackmail. They said that they're a requirement to now request rubles in payment because of what they said was unfriendly steps uh, from the West and those sanctions that have come in place, forcing them to take such an action. They say that they will continue to happily uh, be a reliable partner uh, and supplier uh, of Russian gas going forward uh, if these payments are made uh, in rubles. Now, the message from the European Union we're hearing is that um, they, are, they should be allowed to continue paying in euros if permitted. There's some reporting, though, coming out from Bloomberg when it comes to the payment of rubles. They say uh, that at least four European gas buyers uh, have purchased in rubles uh, already. That's according to Bloomberg sources at Gazprom, of course, the state-backed uh, gas company in Russia. They say that another 10 European firms have open accounts to perhaps lead the way to be able to pay in rubles in the future. Now, of course, when it comes to uh, other European nations being cut off from Russian gas, like we've seen with Poland and Bulgaria going forward. Well, we might have to wait till the second, uh, the second half of May, potentially, because that is when the next round of payments uh, for Russian gas are due for Europe. All right, Will, thank you for that. Will Denslow there in Riga. And NATO has kept the door wide open for Finland and Sweden to join the alliance, further stoking tensions with Russia. The two European countries are said to be preparing bids for membership of the military alliance. We are in dialogue with Finland and Sweden and uh, it's their decision. But if they decide to apply, the, uh, Finland and Sweden will be warmly welcomed and expect the process to go uh, quickly. Rosie Bircher joins us from Brussels. Rosie, uh, what will be Finland and Sweden again by joining NATO at this time? 
Well, what any country stands most to gain from joining NATO is becoming party to Article 5. That's NATO's collective defence pledge, which says that an attack on one is an attack on all. And it means that if Finland or Sweden were to join and they were to be attacked or their security were to be threatened, they could count on defensive support from other NATO allies, including the United States. Now, Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg has reiterated that very sobering warning that this war in Ukraine could drag on for years. And that's perhaps why we're seeing this surge in public opinion and public support in both Sweden and Finland for joining the alliance. That's something which has shot up since the war in Ukraine erupted. That's some of what, they, what those two countries could stand to gain. But there are also, of course, risks which would come with joining the alliance. That's something the Finnish government has outlined for its lawmakers in a white paper it prepared with the pros and cons of joining the alliance. They are now mulling that and we're expecting a decision within the coming weeks. Uh, and when it comes to the response we can expect from Russia uh, of these two countries joining, it, it's been very, uh, Russia's been very uh, 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 stern about it in the past. Uh, but uh, could we actually see something more coming out of that, perhaps even the same fate as Ukraine? Well, Russia is in principle very opposed to NATO enlargement. And on the specific cases of Sweden and Finland, Moscow has also issued quite a clear warning. It said that it would take steps to rebalance the situation and said that Finland and Sweden joining would not bring security to Europe. Now, we don't have an exact idea of what those measures to rebalance could in fact include. But we know, according to that Finnish government white paper, that they are predicting there could be tensions along the Finnish border with Russia which is more than 800 miles long. So lots for Finland and Sweden to consider there. Of course, they will spark the ire of Moscow if they proceed with this application. That's why NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg was very clear today to highlight that he thinks NATO allies could find arrangements for security guarantees for Finland and Sweden in the interim period between when they apply and when they are formally accede to the alliance. Because there is a, a fear that in that interim period, before that Article 5 commitment kicks in, they could be targets target of attacks or subject to attacks. And that's why the NATO Defensive Alliance is trying to reassure them that if they were in that interim period, that there could be further security guarantees offered with some sort of arrangements, though we don't know what that would actually entail so far. All right, Rosie Burchard in Brussels. Thank you for those uh, updates there.